Hello to everybody. I would like, first of all, thanks, thank the organizers for the invitation. I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, and I would like to share some of uh, my memories on my first visit to Catalonia for the introduction. Uh, in uh, 1984, I was invited uh, by the University of Barcelona, uh, the CMN, and the University of uh, Palma de Mallorca uh, to lecture on the uh, language policy issues in the then Slovenia as a uh, one of uh, as one of the republics of the uh, Federative uh, Socialist Republic of Yugoslavia. Uh, these were the times uh, of early normalization in Catalonia, and uh, uh, the sal, the, the rooms were full to the last seat. Uh, the public was very interested also in details and so on. And uh, uh, together with my colleagues from Belgium and Switzerland, we felt that this was really a very urgent issue. Uh, the language policy planning was really a ur very urgent issue in Catalonia. Uh, but then a uh, funny thing happened when we came to Girona. The room was empty at the time of the beginning of the lecture. And we were very surprised. Uh, but then we were instructed that in a quarter of an hour or so, uh, the room will uh, become uh, full as usual. What was the reason of this delay? It was the football match between Madrid and Catalonia. And then I realized that along with the normalization issue, <coughs> football is also one of the top issues in Catalonia. So uh, I'm pleased to conclude somehow my uh, lecturing career here in Catalonia with you. Uh, to start, Slovenian area or Slovenian territory settled by S Slovenes bears a rather interesting and uh, linguistically relevant characteristics, uh, namely, it is a meeting point of three or more linguistic families. The Slovene language, namely, is in contact for search centuries, uh, in direct contact with Romanic, Germanic, Slavic, and Ugrofinic uh, language family through Hungarian, through German, through Italian, and through Serbo-Croatian. Already in uh, 1938, uh, the well-known Russian linguist, at least well-known in our part of the world, Isachenko, uh, defined it as an area where different languages and their varieties exist together, each of them performing specific, clearly delimited functions. And people speaking these varieties and languages never cross the lines. Uh, Isachenko didn't give the name to this phenomenon, but everybody among us knows that he was speaking, in fact, about the diglossia, the phenomenon which was uh, uh, defined as by name only some 20 years later, or over 20 years later, by the well-known linguist Gumpertz. Uh, such linguistic constellation strongly influenced the perceptions of the Slovene language native speakers with regard to their language and the language of the others. Foreign languages being almost conditio sine qua non for economic survival of Slovene people, while their mother tongue served as a heart of their individuality and connectedness as a community, as a nation. Although low in number, the population of, Sloven of Slovenia, of the actual Slovenia, exhibits quite diversified linguistic picture. Over 11 categories were registered in 2002, 
when the last field collecting of data on the ethnic and language features of the population took place. Since then, demographic information is taken from the register of population and data about the ethnicity and language features or structure are not accessible anymore. According to the data from the January 12, uh, 2015, Slovenia had a population of over two million, nearly 5% of which were foreign citizens. Uh, you have the structure on the screen. Uh, uh, the missing figures, the missing numbers, uh, are divided among uh, the uh, members of uh, other ethnic groups. Uh, mostly people from the republics of ex-Yugoslav republics, Serbs, Croats, Macedonians, and so on, about which I will speak a little bit later. Uh, the Slovene language policy and planning are closely related to the perception of the Slovene people's evolution into a modern nation, language and culture being considered the foundations of the Slovene ethnic identity and a permanent, permanent argument in aspiration for the Slovene statehood. This sensitivity concerning uh, the ethnic identity markers language in the first place, are due to the historical status relationship among languages in this region, already in times of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy, when uh, the Slovenian lands were divided to the, on the Austria, to the Austria and to the uh, uh, Hungarian part, uh, the lands Kuroška, Krajinska, Štajerska, uh, Primorska, and so on were under Austrian administration, while Prekmurje belonged to the Hungarian part uh, of the monarchy with, with its, its own legislation. Uh, exception is the uh, Slavia Veneta, which uh, was under Italian administration since 11, uh, 1866. Uh, so, uh, through history, uh, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, then, after the uh, 1918 uh, Slovene, uh, Slovene lands, uh, a part of Slovene lands became uh, uh, part of Yugoslavia. First, the state of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes. Then, it was named Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes, and uh, uh, at last, Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Uh, these names uh, of the state, I, I, uh, I put it on, on purpose because uh, they uh, somehow uh, show the, the hierarchy, hierarchy between the, then not nations but tribes of the same nation as uh, they were named. Serbs, Croats, Slovenes tribes of the same nations, uh, of the same nation, and uh, their languages being varieties of the same language. Uh, from uh, 41 till 45, uh, Slovenia was divided uh, uh, among German, Italian, and Hungarian occupation systems. And then from uh, 1945 till 91, uh, it has become one of the six republics of the Socialist Federated uh, Yugoslavia. Uh, so um, throughout the history, the endeavors were present for the Slovene language autonomy expressed in striving for the high language functions which were held by different other languages in different periods, namely Latin, German, Italian, Hungarian, Serbo-Croatian. In absence of other political power resources, namely the administrative state mechanisms, language and culture functioned as a frame of reference for national unification. This urgent need to provide a socio-political form which would guarantee the Slovenes to establish and express themselves as a modern nation 
in their own authority is also reflected in the Constitution of, Republic, of the Republic of Slovenia introductory statement. Uh, it says, among others, proceeding from the historical fact that in a centuries long struggle for national liberations, we Slovenes have established our national identity and asserted our statehood, the Assembly of the Republic of Slo the Slovenia hereby adopts the constitution and so on. This is the preface to this constitution of 91. So, at the moment, we can speak about uh, Slovenia as an ad independent state of democratic form, democratic republic form. Uh, it joined uh, the EU on May the 1st, 2004, uh, became member of the NATO the same year with capital city of Ljubljana. I hope some of you have visited it. <laughs> with the official language Slovene, um, on the state level, uh, and with two regional official languages, Hungarian and Italian. Uh, other languages are also mentioned in the Constitution, and also some of them have uh, a specific law, uh, namely the Romani language and uh, uh, the sign language. It is interesting that the sign language, uh, the Slovene Sign Language Act was adopted even prior to the Slovene uh, uh, public use, uh, uh, to the act of the public use of Slovenian. In, nine, in 2002, while the, the act on Slovenian was uh, adopted in 2004. The act on the Romani language was adopted in 2007. Uh, Ex-Yugoslav uh, languages are not specifically re related to in the Constitution, uh, but nevertheless, there are some uh, articles which uh, uh, relate to their uh, language and their rights. Um, so uh, the fact that from the end of the 7th century until 1991, uh, the areas settled by the Slovenes were other politi under political authority of a larger multinational state affected the attitudes of the Slovene people towards the ethnic and language issues till present days. Namely, with the post-First War and post-Second War, uh, uh, peace treaties due to geopolitical reasons and interwar great power bargaining, substantial parts of the territories settled by Slovenes were assigned to other states. Uh, <coughs> according to estimations, up to one fourth to one third of the Slovene population is left outside the actual borders of Slovenia. Uh, either as Slovene national minorities in the neighboring countries or as Slovenes in diaspora. Uh, three, so three communities of Slovene language native speakers figure today on the agenda of the Slovene language policy protection and promotion. These are Slovenes in the central Slovenia, of course, uh, and then the Slovenes uh, uh, in the three geographically contiguous territories in Austria, Hungary, Italy, and Croatia. Uh, the uh, Slovene population settled in Croatia uh, became minority only after 1991. Uh, as you saw uh, earlier, this uh, uh, green uh, limits uh, uh, design the actual ethnic territory or ethnic areas of the Slovene nation, uh, named uh, uh, often as a co uh, Slovene cultural realm. However, at, at, at the same time, uh, the rights, or even special rights, uh, are formulating in the Constitution for uh, 
uh, Italian and Hungarian national minorities. Uh -huh. uh, Slovenes in the diaspora, I mentioned where they live. Sorry. Which are the uh, legal documents uh, related to the language uh, legislation on the state level of co constitution, basic law, sector specific laws, on municip municipality level, municipalities with mixed population uh, also have to take care uh, of uh, these regulations in their statutes, decrees, and pres prescriptions. Uh, the language related clauses in Slovenia are the following. The, first, uh, the Article 11, the official language in Slovenia is Slovene. In those municipalities where Italian or Hungarian national communities reside, Italian or Hungarian shall be the official languages. Or so. Uh, as I mentioned before, there are also individual language rights, which mostly relate to uh, people from ex-Yugoslav republics. They have the right to organize uh, their cultural associations uh, in which they uh, can uh, do several activities uh, along with publishing their uh, uh, information in their languages. The, uh, so in the individual right is to use one script, a language and script, uh, and uh, uh, in the manner provided by law, of course, uh, and exercise uh, his rights, uh, rights and duties and, proce and procedure before the state. Uh, yesterday I asked uh, the colleague, uh, from Finland, uh, uh, how is the, the language of the client established in front of the court? Uh, this was a, a rather ardent issue uh, in the Slovenia bilingual regions, and it was uh, uh, said or decided that uh, uh, nobody is permitted to ask the client in which language she or he would want to speak, but that the judge must uh, adapt his language to the language of the client. So uh, what he starts, the language he starts to speak in uh, must be uh, uh, used by the judge or any other uh, official person in, with which a uh, person is in contact. Just by the way, to explain my last uh, yesterday question. Uh, a special article is uh, dedicated to the rights of autochthonous uh, Italian and Hungarian national minorities. In Slovenia, uh, they are regarded as collective rights. It's rather a long article, you will see. I, I will leave it, you can read it slowly. Uh, but what is mo the most important is the education and schooling in their own language. And the fact that uh, uh, not uh, Decree, not a law, nothing uh, legal can be, happen without their consent or without the consent of their representatives. Uh, the representatives of both minorities are di directly uh, elected, to the, elected to the Parliament of Slovenia and also into the municipality uh, organs. So you see, it is a very long uh, and very exhaustive uh, uh, article, uh, which has a, a detailed uh, explanation also in uh, uh, sectoral law and in individual uh, laws on education. On, uh, in fact, in every law that uh, regards the use of language, the English, uh, the Italian and Hungarian uh, languages are mentioned too on equal footing. Uh, the same, namely special uh, rights, uh, also pertain to the Romani community. Uh, and uh, uh, the Romana Community Act, which I uh, already mentioned, uh, also regulates the, the responsibility of the Slovenia for the maintenance and the development of the Romani language. 
So uh, I will uh, make a short excursion into the uh, times of the uh, uh, federal, Federative Republic because it may be instructive to, for this gremium and uh, uh, just to show you how the development went on, uh, what brought uh, such uh, uh, solutions uh, uh, or decisions on independence about what was the linguistic part of it. Uh, today, still, in the Slovene public opinion, it is the statement beyond the debate that the Slovene language status planning, and along with it, its corpus planning, uh, together with gradual spreading of its function into the channels of public communication, remained a non-concluded process until the creation of the independent Slovene state in 1991. What does it mean? Namely, in spite of the fact that since 1963, the Slovene language figured as one of the equal state languages on the Yugoslav federal level, and it was expressly prescribed as the language of all state institutions' activities in the Socialist Republic of Slovenia, even in this framework, it was still deprived of some functions which, in the eyes of Slovenes at least, were considered a sign, a sign of a full, of a complete nationhood. On the political and constitutional level, it was the role of the commanding language in the army. On the level of the communication praxis, uh, it was Serbo-Croatian as the language of wider communication among speakers of different Yugoslav languages, which excited opposition in Slovenia. Namely, the Slovenes uh, held that uh, the uh, institutional uh, uh, regulations should be strictly, strictly um, uh, respected and that uh, each uh, should be able, everybody should be able to use uh, his or her own language on the level of uh, federative matters. Uh, commanding in the army units was reserved for the Serbo-Croatian language only, also in Slovenia. The demand to assign this function to Slovene has its roots in the fact that the Slovene was the commanding language in the territory of Slovenia during the Second World War in the partisan uh, uh, movement and even in the Austro-Hungarian monarchy times. Gradually, the status, the status of Slovene in the army units and their activities in Slovenia did augment. In the 18th, the written text of the solemn oath was in the language of a soldier. It means also in Slovene. Uh, the oral oath, ho however, still in serbo creation. Educational activities, inscriptions on the army objects in Slovenia were in Slovene. Communication with, with non-military citizens was in Slovene and so on. However, it was precisely because of the above-mentioned historical load that the language issue has been so strongly instrumentalized for the unification of the Slovene public opinion on the occasion of the trial to the group of four people charged for a betrayal of a military secret in 1981, the process which uh, directly preceded the, uh, the divorce from Yugoslavia and maybe even incited it. In spite of the fact that serbo croatian <coughs> did not figure as the dominant state language in the federal constitution, attempts to assign to this the function of the language of a wider communication so that it would function as a kind of lingua franca in public discourse all over Yugoslavia, was also met with strong opposition in Slovenia and was considered a disregard of the provisions on the equal use of national and minority languages in public communications. Regardless of the above mentioned and other conflict <coughs> issues, many of the prominent Slovene linguists and intellectuals admit that after the Second World War, in spite of some limitations, 
the Slovene language status had steadily increased and its functions have spread significantly. So let us return to the actual language policy. Uh, with the constitution, the Slovene language, as we saw, was declared the official language in Slovenia. Uh, since 2004, the basic rules on the public use of Slovene as the official language of the Republic of Slovenia have, have been determined by the public use of the Slovene Language Act. The, pub the public use of Slovene in specific areas were also determined in greater detail, detail by a number of other laws, uh, sector-related laws like uh, Act on the Social Care, Act on the Medical Care, Medical Care Act on Education, uh, Act on Employment, and so on. The Ministry of Culture is responsible for monitoring the implementation of legal provisions related to the language use, but other ministries also are obliged to participate in the carrying out of duties in this area defined in the Article 26. The history of the act might be interesting for this gremium. Uh, therefore, I will explain it shortly. Uh, the changed socio-political situation in, uh, after 91 soon exposed some neuralgic points. It seems that with the independence of Slovenia, a more loose attitude towards the Slovene language developed. On the one hand, this was manifested by a rather shallow respect of the norm in public, written, and oral discourse. On the other hand, the influence of the American culture and mode of expression augmented. Till then, the endeavor for the autonomy of the Slovene language was expressed, among others, also in puristic efforts mostly oriented against the influence of the serb creation This vigilance, of course, seems to become obsolete after the common destiny of the two languages, the Slovenian and the serb creation parted. The growing impetus of political and economic integration, the so-called globalization, was reflected in Slovenia not only in the economic field, in a small nation like Slovenia, it soon exposed itself, itself also as a socio-cultural and communication phenomenon. The growth of the communication technology brought many English language patterns in communication and in the way of life of the Slovenian society. In fact, by way of mass media and specifically the electronic communication means the American style of life is steadily invading almost every, almost, uh, every Slovene family. In fact, one could argue that a paradoxical thing has happened. Parallel to its status promotion into a state language, there is no obvious substantial increase of the Slovene language prestige. On the contrary, there are signs that in certain layers of population, its prestige has been diminishing. Many warnings have been launched against the kind of Slovene-English diglossia, which seemingly is about to spread in Slovenia. Alarm has been triggered on account of the public science, language of expert and scientific meetings, language of scientific publications, language of the uh, university lectures and seminars, diplomas and postgraduate works, which more and more often is English. A case per se, exciting alarm, is communication in the foreign enterprises in Slovenia, 
where frequently Slovene is not used anymore even in the personal documentation of the workers. With an aim to canalize the above described detrimental phenomenon, uh, an initiative was given by uh, an initiative was given in 1993 that a group of linguists and other experts with the parliament should be concerned with fundamental language planning and should also dwell upon legislation in this field. In March 1994, <coughs> a group of experts was nominated as a per permanent working body of the Parliamentary Committee for Culture, Education and Sport with the task to launch its suggestions regarding language policy and language planning to the parliament and to wider public. At the same time, several individuals concerned about the Slovene language suggested that the matters regarding status of the Slovene language should be reg regulated by, the by a special law. The proposal, however, did not come from the working group. The first text of law was prepared at the beginning of the uh, 1997 by the then Minister of Culture. He was a linguist, by the way. In the draft, two separate topics were regulated. The first are the domain of Slovene official language used that, should, that the law should regulate, and the second, the second is setting up of a state committee uh, which, with the task to dwell upon systematic creation and execution of the language policy. Its fundamental role is to advise and assess the activities related to language policies. Control over this regard, misuse, misuse uh, of the law is imposed on the inspection in the relative sphere of activity. Obviously, the idea was not unanimously and enthusiastically, enthusiastically supported by the working group. Uh, two confronting views on language policy evidently uh, emanating from two different linguistic schools stem from the debate of law. Reasons for different views on the common Slovene formal language status can be described in view of theoretical, disciplinary, and also generational uh, standpoint var variation. On the one side, there is a rather traditionalistic, defensive approach or view upon the Slovene language as an ideal of national, above mentioned national unity. In this view, Slovene language is the sacred symbol of Slovene nation, the eminent marker of the Slovene identity. The outside token of the nation's vitality is the impeccable Slovene language in public use. According to this approach, at the moment, or better to say through history, the language has been endangered because of the foreign dominance by insufficiently developed language competence and disrespect of the norm of, by its speakers. Beyond this approach, one could say introverted approach to the Slovene language, the concept of a nation state based on the sovereignty of only one ethnic community, namely Slovenian, nation can be discerned. The modern tendency to see a state uh, as a community of citizens of different ethnic, cultural, and linguistic background can hardly be traced in this approach. Terms like open society, ethnic, and language pluralism are exceptional in this discourse. Opposed to this traditionalistic or primordial approach, one could call it uh, even a renewed language activism from the past. Uh, so opposed to this stands a more moderate, modern approach 
oriented towards a wider context of the language acquisition and language use. In view of this kind of argumentation, the status of the Slovene language has been efficiently regulated by the Constitution and the laws. Uh, in the independent Slovene state, <coughs> the Slovene language has gained the status of the state language and its prestige depends on the development and promotion of the whole society of Slovenia. The quality of written and oral public discourse then depends on factors that are close, closely related to general social climate and welfare. The role of education and mass media has been underlined in this connection. The necessity for unhindered continuous process of preparation of fundamental works on the prescribed norm uh, in central scientific institution has been exposed uh, as a vital element, the production of uh, linguistic materials such as orthographic, orthography, dictionaries, grammars, lexo lexicography, and so on, being essential for future development. Electronic corpus selection, development of organized translation services, as well as ample linguistic research should re uh, support this work. Uh, so uh, that was the debate on the law. Uh, in the actual law, two legislative approaches towards language are integrated. On the one hand, the Scandinavian model is followed. The language office should play a decisive uh, advisory and stimulation role in language matters. On the other hand, uh, there are elements of the French model integrated in the law, namely it has a repressive function, as you can see on the screen, penalties being foreseen for the disrespect of the proper language use by institutions and responsible individuals. My time is coming to... Okay. Um, the law triggered a series of activities. In fact, uh, demands were already put forward in the law itself. Uh, a series of activities uh, for formulating of documents on a national program for language policy. Uh, and, uh, of course, also measures ensuring uh, the its implementation. So uh, the resolution on a national program for language policy for the period 2007-2012 was adopted uh, as a strategic document of the Slovene state based on the consensus of both the civil society and the state policy. It is expected that such a document exercises a notable public impact. Uh, the resolution uh, has four sets of goals which should uh, uh, promote the uh, Slovene language public use uh, as uh, defined by the Article 4 of the Slovene Language Act. The first set is related to the care to provide a legal basis for the usage of Slovene uh, and in this uh, 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 relations, there are two uh, uh, additional aims. Then the care for constant scientific and research monitoring of the living language with uh, three additional aims. Uh, care to enhance possibilities uh, for invigoration of mother tongue and for the foreign language learning and usage so that the Slovene speakers would have the versatile uh, capacity to respond to the challenges of the home, it means national, as well as a European and global communication space. Uh, the uh, last uh, aim uh, is related to care for the development and culture of the language. 
so that uh, it would uh, uh, have an effect in traditional and new domains emerging with the societal and technological development and so on. And the last uh, aim is Slovenia should take a more active part in creation of the European Union Union's policy, uh, language policy directions. In comparison to the first program, uh, the program for language policy uh, 214, 218 uh, shows a shift from the field of protection of the Slovenian language to the field of education and to uh, the field of the language equipment where the resources, technology, digitalization, standardization, language description, and so on are in the forefront of uh, attention. Uh, more attention has been given in the uh, act for this period, or I mean in the resolution for this period, also uh, to the uh, questions of speakers with special needs. I must mention that also budget is, uh, 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 has been prepared for the execution of these, uh, of the foreseen measure, measures, uh, but I will not go into details now. Uh, should I conclude? I have prepared uh, a series of um, positive and uh, less positive aspect of the new position, but uh, you will probably uh, read it in the paper when it is published. Uh, anyway, to conclude, uh, the question was uh, the status of languages. Does official recognition matter? My answer would be yes, it matters, beyond doubt. Along with regulating the language-related course of events, I mean language use, usage and language planners, planning, the influence it has on the speaker's attitudes should be taken into in the account. The language usage, usage regulation endeavors may sometimes seem futile in vice of a language of wider communication while a rivalry, either on a national or global level. However, it is exactly the official recognition and measures resulting from the status planning that give strength to a national language in its seemingly and actual unequal position. To my mind, official recognition is especially important with regard to the language planning. It means developing the linguistic means, terminologies, uh, corpuses, and so on, uh, which is strongly dependent on appropriated financial support which the state obligates itself to provide along with the language-related prescriptions. And uh, as for Slovene language, uh, crucial moments in the history and today, uh, I see two critical moments uh, of special importance for Slovene language development. The moments when, in fact, Slovene, regardless of the low number of its speakers, joined the ranks of privileged languages. Namely, in the 16th century, it was the 12th language that the Bible was translated into. And today, it is one of the smallest languages that the Bible of the modern age, age has been translated it into namely the Windows operating system and programs written for it. The latter is also rising hope for the future Slovene language vitality.
Thank you very much for your attention.